Monday the 4th of October. It's a lovely afternoon after all the rain we had yesterday, but you can see the weir at the top there. It's very high. The water's very peaky, but still has some sediment in it. And the weir pool is just a great boiling mass of water. So there you can see what remains of the island. Not a lot. Uh, but I've seen the river very much higher than this. I thought it would have been higher today, to be honest. Uh, certainly seen it up over that bank on the far side. And uh, I turn around. I've seen it up on the road, which is the top of that little path. So, it's not the biggest flood, but it's certainly, uh, as far as barbel fishing is concerned, a very, very promising day. Well, this is today's peg. You can see the water is well up. Uh, not as high as I thought it was going to be, it's just at the top of the bank here. It's very deep, straight off the edge, must be ten feet or more. It's going to fall in. <laughs> especially when the pegs are quite slippy. Fortunately this peg is quite flat, uh, but some of them slope down towards the river. It's very easy to go flat on your backside. Uh, there you can see the that little stick. That little stick there I've just put in to mark the edge, or maybe just close to the edge and that's where it drops off and it's very difficult to see and the other little stick I've just put in there to mark the level to see whether it's going up or down and and how fast it's going up or down I suspect it's falling and it's probably falling quite quickly now the rain having stopped about four o'clock yesterday afternoon well, the water is still carrying that peat, it's got a fair amount of sediment in uh, which tends to disguise it a little bit and usually conditions like this are very very good for barbel but uh, you only know that <laughs> if you catch one or two or more maybe uh, we'll see, we just have to be optimistic about these things well today it's going to be a day of big weights now you can see the two weights I'm going to use one is a five ounce, that's sea weight, the round one the other one is six ounce I do have some bigger weights in the bag if necessary. There's a lot of debris coming down the river as long as, as well as a strong current and the debris collects on the line, lots of leaves and bits of twig and so on. And uh, as it builds up it tends to drag the weight out of position. So there'll be a lot more casting today, much more frequent. Normally I try and cast once every hour but I can see it's going to be once every 10-15 minutes here. So, yeah. Similarly if you catch a big fish and it's powering away in this current. You need a very, very strong rod to pull it round. Minimum two pounds, I would think, but two and a half, three pounds would be more substantial. Together with, obviously, uh, uprated line and hook length. I tend to fish heavy anyway, so um, I don't have a problem with these conditions. Anyway, we'll see. Hopefully we get a barbel on the bank and uh, maybe one or two, but so far only one guy is here and he's had nothing. Two chaps have just left, one's had an eel and the other one, he was here for about two hours and uh, he just gave up and went. I didn't actually see him, but I remain optimistic. I hope uh, we have a nice big take in this bright sunshine, that would be nice. And uh, I'll get set up now and cast in. Well, both rods are in now. It's uh, heavy weights, heavy line, bigger hooks, heavier hook length, and the bait runners have had to be tightened up to increase the drags so that the leaves and rubbish and fast flowing water don't pull line off this reel and take it all the way downstream. Uh, but uh, just listen out for the clicks, you can tell when line is being pulled off because you get this click click, click, click. Uh, with the bait runners being tightened up, obviously 
there's an increased chance of rod and reel being pulled into the river by a fast, fast fish or a big fish again using the flow of this river to escape. So it's uh, it's not a day for sitting back and relaxing and hoping that the bait runner is going to save you, because it probably won't. It's very bright, you can see the watercolour behind me, it's ideal for barbel fishing and the height's right and it's just beginning to fall, although I prefer rising water myself, but um, the bright light doesn't help and hopefully we might, well, we might get a take in the sunshine, but I doubt it. We'll probably have to wait until later on. And, uh, but hopefully we'll get a take on a, a barbel or maybe two barbel before the end of the evening. It's the same peg as I fished on Saturday when I didn't have a tap. <laughs> but not a knock. So uh, never the optimist. That's what we need. Perseverance. Anyway, I'll turn around and face these rods now. I can see them in the camera so I know what's happening. But uh, I'll turn around and face them now and keep a close eye so that uh, if we get a nice fish on, I'm there to grab them quickly. Well there you can see the rubbish after 10 minutes. It's, a, it's an easy pack to fish today. Well, it's a fabulous day. I'm sitting here absolutely baking hot in this sunshine. I've to take my coat off. Uh, unusual for October. It was cold this morning and quite foggy. Um, but this afternoon, it's absolutely stifling sitting here. Uh, not very good for fishing, but by goodness. Grand relaxing afternoon. Well, you can see there after Ten minutes in the water, you see the big bend on that top, on that bottom rod. It's a two-pound test curve rod, and you can see there how the rubbish is pulling it round, bending it after just ten minutes in the water. So it's going to be a busy afternoon, I think. Well, you can see the faster moving water on the far side, but just behind this bush here, it's very still. And in between them, you can just see that slow moving froth just off the end of the bushes, where there's a bit of a crease. It's a little bit more obvious there. So you see that line of froth. Very slow moving. Barbel favour creases and they tend to sit in the slow moving water and then nip out and investigate anything that's coming past in the streamier water. Obviously, it saves them energy. So, I'm going to cast the top rod into that now. I've tried the middle and it just gets pulled around even with a six ounce weight on. So, I'll put the top rod into that crease there and we'll see how. How lucky we are with that. On the bottom rod I'll continue to cast across and downstream. If I cast across into the stream of water with a five ounce weight on it uh, swings round and drops into slightly slow moving water where I hope the barbel are hanging about. But so far absolutely zilch. <laughs> 